I think they want to keep it a secret. <laughs> you know, they don't want everybody to know. On the banks of the Mississippi River are over 100 boathouses that have all endured a decades-long legal battle to live here as a self-governing society essentially for free. The reason why this island is so valuable to us is because it's worthless to everybody else. This has attracted quite the slew of characters. The misfits, probably. The people that don't like to fit into normal society. Along with people that build their homes with no codes, no rules, and no electricity. With no utility bills, off the grid, 100%. And they stay here all year throughout the Minnesota winter. Some of those guys stay out there all year round, so it's, it's pretty amazing. Turns out it's pretty difficult to line up people to talk to that live off-grid. So the first thing we did when we showed up was walk some docks. Would you be interested in talking about the island? Oh. Until we were welcomed by a man aptly named Pirate Pat. Hey, I want to talk to you a little bit. Everything's here. just like a mess because I... No uh, worries. Yeah. And how long have you been here? I'm thinking eight years this time. I was given my spot by the Winona Boathouse Association, thankfully. Really? You yeah. Didn't, you didn't pirate it or anything? Uh, no, I kind of <laughs> did. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I guess you could say that. I just kind of squatted into this position. Pirate Pat squatting, which he started here over 30 years ago, has turned into a valuable investment. Slips like his can sell for $40,000 or more. Property aside, Pat has experienced some hardship down on the island. Is this a sketchy location then? I think so. Okay. You know, I carry, conceal carry. Mm -hmm. I have security. Right. Well, I was, uh, <laughs> I was attacked by my neighbor. <laughs> Same Physic way you're physically and brutally, no, that's the one in that house next door. And ever since then, things have really changed, you know. Wow. So I think of my security first. But, uh, <clears throat> very cheap, very inexpensive lifestyle. Yeah, so I mean, with that, are you able to live on your own time more and do what you want because you have less expenses? That's why I call it like a semi-retirement. You know, I've kind of been semi-retired my whole life, but this makes it way easier to you right. know, live. This will slam if you, I don't know how much light you need or want, but this is it. Comes complete with uh, bedroom, <laughs> everything. TV, my security system, uh, kitchen galley. You got it all right here, everything you need. Yeah, it works for me, you know, a single bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you even got, you've got a camera set up? Yeah, I got four of them. Nice, you got so, the real security system. That's another reason I like to get 100% connected to the uh, solar power and that, you know, just to run certain items. Um, I did put this in, which was quite the ordeal. 22 foot uh, gin pole, they call them. But, but that'll keep your whole setup here if it floods mm -hmm. and stuff? Right, right. What about the bugs? Well, like as soon as it gets around dark, I go in the house and shut the door. <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah. This guy's getting eaten up. Yeah, them gnats, I noticed <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, I can't handle this. <laughs> We just left the island to drive here to get what? The bugs are absolutely annihilating us, so we're gonna get some bug spray. Do you have bug spray? Yeah, it's right up here though. After disinsecting the entire island, we ran into another resident mid construction. Oh, it's quite a good looking place. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. I'm Michael. Harris. Harris, good to meet yeah, you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Michael showed us into his boathouse that he and his family built themselves. We're in a boat house. A home for a boat. Turned house. Turned home, yeah. And when we stood here right away, we were thinking, man, we need a big open room so that we can see the bluffs in the distance. So that's kind of what we designed it around. Merges into the kitchen over here. The one other thing we really have to watch out for is how much we use electricity. So um, 12 volt fridge and uh, we cook with propane. All the lights are LED. And that's like the bulk of our energy consumption, really. And then we just have one bedroom 
When we planned the thing out, we hadn't had the kid yet, so. Michael and Chelsea are raising their child on their boat year round. So yeah, Hutch has been here his whole life. Yep. What is it like having a kid here? He loves it. He loves the water. He loves going on the boat. He loves the ducks. Yeah. So I think he's just going to have a unique perspective on the natural world instead of having all the amenities. So I think there's kind of like that feels important too, to kind of know where all your stuff comes from and to work for it a little bit. And then it is nice because we're so close, so we bike over a lot, or boat over to get our groceries. Speaking of boating to do errands, as we were searching for another resident to talk with, we ran into this king on his house boat. I feel like a king going down Oh the yeah, river. I bet. <laughs> That's Gertie, who has hitchhiked, train hopped, and traveled the river for years. Until he recently landed this infamous geodesic dome, which he is currently renovating, and skirting around building codes by living on the water. So as a builder, what are the different codes that you have to That's obey, the beauty you know? of boats. I mean, at least houseboats, you can really um, create whatever you want, as long as it, it's not deemed unsafe by the Coast Guard or, you know. Right. What are the most challenging parts about living like this? Having a hot water and a shower, like we finally got that down where we collect all the rainwater and pump it up to a water tower and gravity feed to a hot water heater and stuff, but. What is this community most similar to in America or around the world? I think in places like Slab City, or I think we have a similar need to kind of be left alone a little bit, but it's a completely different way of living. I mean, they're in the middle of the desert and we're in the middle of the river and, you know, but it, being in nature here, I think is a thing that we're all relate to, you know. You're the invasive species, you know, in, in their environment, and <laughs> you're the invasive species. Yeah, I mean, species. well, we can, we can dip out of here if you want. <laughs> Just then, something happened in the middle of our conversation that's never happened before. Gertie's neighbor waved him over to give him snacks. So that's how you get to the neighbors? Yep. Like, uh... Then Gertie's partner, Gina, took us out on the boat. So where are we going? Oh, we're gonna go out for a little rip party, bud. How are we going out for a little rip party? <laughs> we're gonna take you guys down to the end of the island so you can get a view of all the boathouses in one fell swoop. Okay, so there's 101 boathouses here? There are, in total, yeah. So there can never be more than 101. And... So it's maxed out. There's never gonna be any more houseboats or boathouses here. No, nope, no, nope. and these are all boathouses, by the way. That's a good point. A houseboat is a boat with a motor that you can drive, but also sleep or live in. A boat house is, well, primarily a house for a boat, but also for people that does not move. And those are what everybody on Latch Island lives on, except for Pirate Pat. We just passed the threshold. So these people have electricity. They have the potential for electricity, and most of them do. Yeah, there is, there's power in the park that you can tap into. There's still no plumbing. OK. Gina then showed us into her totally off-grid, floating home, tiny house dome. It's a bit of a mess because we're in the middle of a giant project. Oh, that's the compressor going off. It'll stop in a second. We're not sinking, are we? Yeah, no, we're not sinking, no. Nope. And we'll come show you guys. Um. Um. Can I come inside here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. How do you handle water? I mean, you're on the water. Yeah. You're not, are you drinking the water that you're on? No, we are not drinking the water that we're on. Um, when we haul, haul drinking water. In from the city nearby? Yeah, from the town, yeah. Didn't know we were having company. Oh, wait, see. Okay. We're not looking to There we go. That is kind of crazy. Like, we're just in your bedroom and yeah, you walk out here. to this. It's, it's amazing. Uh huh. Want to come, Viva? You can come. Wow. Are there community rules governing everyone living here? There's a boathouse association. Um, and then beyond that, it's like um, not a whole lot of governance that happens. But there is a board that's been established for when there are issues that need to be voted on or mm -hmm. if the community that's on the island needs to like interact with the city council in an official way 
there's like something in place to do it. And how exactly they got to this point, we're gonna need a little history. World War I caused a resurgence in river shipments along the Mississippi as other transportation methods became clogged. One of these barges, however, mysteriously sunk near the North Channel Bridge. The sunken material in the river rerouted river travelers to the south side, leaving the north, well, open to squatters. And the squatters came. In fact, throughout the 60s, many of these homes were sold for just one dollar. Then came a man named John Rupke. After John moved in, the Army Corps of Engineers, the DNR, and the City Council tried to remove all boathouses from the Mississippi in 1979. Fortunately, John started the Island Council, one member of which happened to be the judge that was hearing the case. Long story short, the judge ruled in their favor, and 43 years later, John is still here. Is there anything like that that's happening now? Struggles no, with no, the government? no. So, uh, yeah, no, after we, uh, after we settled and became uh, a legitimate part of the city with the city council. Uh, we were, we always thought of ourselves as kind of a. It was, it was we wanted us like a self-governing operation. That's what we wanted. So this is a pretty unique spot in the world. Yeah. Right. 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 The the, the reason why this island is so valuable to us is because it's worthless to everybody else. While they are self-governing, the residents here still pay an annual fee to the city. And we pay a mooring fee. Mm -hmm. My boathouse is like 36 feet. I pay around 350, somewhere in there. So the, for the whole year? It's... Yeah, three, yeah, about 350. So you're allowed 15 feet is what you're allowed. So um, this is what it's supposed to be. And then the rest of the island is supposed to be wilderness, you know? Yeah. We got the city to declare that this island would be left in its natural state. Well, over the years, you got people who... Do some stuff. Yeah, they don't like wilderness as much as some of us do. John, along with other residents, felt that something strange was happening at the tip of the island. We'll have, well, yeah, we'll check that out. Then, on our walk back, we ran into Michael again and asked him about these ropes that can be seen throughout the island. But, yeah, these ones are holding that boathouse in because normally the water is much higher. Like, this is the lowest year we've had in a yeah, while, so... How hard does it get up here? We're at, like, five feet right now, and I think it got up to 21, or maybe it was 19, like, uh, like eight or nine years ago. Jeez. That so that like was, like... Things underwater? Yeah. We'll, we'll probably see you again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's interesting about this place? We ran into like the same people multiple times. I think that aids in like the community aspect. You know, it's like a small, there's one way, <laughs> one way in, one way out. You're gonna run into a lot of people. We then followed these ropes to the water to see how exactly these homes stay afloat. Um, you see what we're floating on here? Yeah. So you, he has a barrel popper over there. That's something that you kind of design and make yourself. And then you have to pop these new barrels um, to keep the house afloat. Winona is a river town. Whether you have a speedboat or a pontoon boat or a little putt-putt houseboat or you have a canoe or a kayak or you just swim on the beaches or jump off the wagon bridge or whatever, people use the river a lot. That's, that's something you only get when you live on a river. You have to be sort of drawn and entertained and occupied by the rhythms and the changes of the river, you know. So somebody who loves the river, I think, would love it down here. Yeah, they get big. If you were to compare this place to like somewhere like Slab City, um, the lifestyle is really similar. Like people are off grid, kind of just building building whatever they can on the river to live. But like the river itself and the area and the nature is like really, really clean and beautiful. And I can't, cannot say the same about Slab City. Um, I, th I think that, yeah, that definitely sets this place apart and uh, makes it kind of beautiful. <laughs>